Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, everyone, and welcome to Humane Architecture. Um, I'm not Martin Despang, in case you couldn't tell. I am Tonya Moy, and we be and I belong to Dokomomo Hawaii with Martin. And Martin has been kind enough to let Dokomomo um, have the summertime to feature like some of our favorite architects. And so today, I would like to feature one of my favorite architects, Stephen Oyakawa. And I have two guests with me who actually work with Stephen. Even though he was in Hawaii for a very short time, to me he's done some of the most iconic um, buildings in Hawaii. Uh, he went to Taliesin, and the, the two people I have here also went to Taliesin. So welcome. We have uh, immediately to my left is Roy Oshiro. And actually, this is the first time I'm meeting Roy, so hello, Roy. <laughs> hello. <laughs> He's an architect who worked with Stephen, and Kimball Townsend, who also went to Taliesin and worked with Stephen. So um, we can start off, can we start off with, because so little is known about him, can we kind of start off with telling a little bit about his, like, where he's from and his, like, like where he went to high school and all that kind of stuff that Hawaii people are always interested in? So, um, yeah, sure, Tony. Yeah. I'll start out with that, and then yeah. I'm going to pass over to Go Roy. Ahead. Go so, ahead. Uh, Steve was born in 1921 in Kahalu mm -hmm. on Oahu and uh, graduated from McKinley High School and went to the University of Hawaii for two years until he transferred to the University of Illinois, from which he graduated in architecture in 1944. Okay. And he had a difficult time at being more years of returning home. And he had an interest in meeting Frank Lloyd Wright, whose architecture he admired very much, and uh, had an opportunity to meet with Frank Lloyd Wright in New York. And Frank Lloyd Wright invited him to come study at Taliesin, which he did for, I think, a very short time, like about three months. And then he ended up coming back to Hawaii and, and went back to study at, or work at, be an apprentice uh, and an architect at Taliesin for 12 years. Uh, beginning in 19, uh, I think 1946. Okay. Roy, you take it right? from there. <laughs> <laughs> well, can we show the slide? We have the first slide. Okay. The first slide. So this shows um, Stephen Oyakawa when he was at Taliesin. So pretty young, huh, uh, I guess. It <laughs> seems like uh, early days uh, with Mr. Wright where all the students could gather around him as he demonstrated his uh, organic Theory. Uh, yeah, theories and, and things that he uh, practiced for the rest of his life. Uh, anyway, Steve Oyokawa, uh, I, met, I met him in around 1960, 61, 1960, around 61. there, okay. because I was going to the University of Hawaii uh -huh. as a student studying architecture. For two years, I determined that I wanted to be an architect. So I researched it and found out that Steve Oyakawa stayed at Taliesin uh -huh. for a number of years, 15 years, I think, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, he was back in Hawaii practicing architecture. Mm -hmm. And apparently, I kind of researched his background when he got here. Uh -huh. He was very controversial. You know, Oyakawa? Steve Oyakawa? Yeah, Oyakawa? yeah, look, yeah, Steve oh, was very controversial. So some people, locally remember that. And when I confront some of the architects here, yeah. and those are the things that they brought up to me, you know. So later on, I went out and I went to meet Steve. Uh -huh. uh, during my last year at school, uh, I mean, not the last year, but my second year at the University School of Architecture. Then what I did is I found out that Steve stayed at Taliesin for yeah. like 15 years or so, and he came back to Hawaii where I met him, but he, he was already married to... Uh, Kate. Kate, yeah, <laughs> Kate, 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 yes. And uh, they had a child at that time when I met him. Mm -hmm, His mm -hmm. name was Musashi, about one year old or so. So I introduced myself, and I said, I'm interested in Taliesin because uh, the professors who kind of taught us, and and uh, Ingleson, Mr. Ingleson also, 
was interested in Mr. Wright, and they gave me all the background of, of on Mr. How to Wright. Get there. Yeah, so I followed up. Then I met Steve and and Kay, and, and I thought at first. They explained a little background on Tel and I said, holy smokes, kind of weird. <laughs> Not in my realm at that time, I was studying at, at the university. Well, I think to make it clear, like if people don't know about Tel right? Because Tel they make you do everything. That's like correct. cleaning mm -hmm. and cooking and growing your food. You live in tents and all that stuff in Arizona, in the heat of Arizona, right? That's correct. So. <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm sure it would scare any 18-year-old. <laughs> but you went, and then, and then um, you came, and then you came. So when you well, went with Tali, uh, how long? Let, let me interrupt for yeah, a second. Go ahead. There, there, there was the uh, article, I think, in 1958, in, in one of the dailies here, uh -huh. and Steve came out being somewhat outspoken about the architecture in Honolulu okay. upon his arrival back here. And, but I do think he did uh, preface it by saying that he did come from studying at Taliesin, so he may have had a, a bit different attitude about it. And uh, I don't think a lot of people would disagree with what he said. I think a lot of it's very appropriate today <laughs> and all that, but I guess it was considered very outspoken uh, oh, at, the, at time. the time. So maybe that's the controversy. You Is know? that the, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So from um, I I do have slides of some some work that he did. And it's kind of chronological, so I have some of the. Um, we can go to the next slide, which is some of the houses that he did. What this is like when he first came back, or in the 19 early 60s, right? These houses. Yeah, Roy actually worked with Steve, so I'll let him fill in on that. But oh. uh, I think his earliest commissions were residential, and this one goes back to 1960, and it's the Yamauchi. Yamaguchi right. house in Kahala mm -hmm. that Roy and I went in, and it's oh. next door to another house, and the original clients are still living in these houses. I, do we have the next yeah. one, too? Is that theirs? No? Is that the same? Is, is that the same house? or That, that is the same, the same yeah, house. I think so, okay. it is. Yeah, so it, but it's very, Fra it's kind of Frank Lloyd Wrightian, prairie style. Uh, prairie you style, absolutely right? correct. <laughs> it's more or less the prairie style with uh, brick and uh, natural material. Yes. You know, and, and that's the way uh, Mr. Wright uh, studies uh, were like uh, nature, directly yeah. with nature. And uh, that's the way we, we were right through the uh, period that I was there. Everything had to do with the uh, culture, nature, and the environment, and all that, uh, which at uh, university, I didn't <laughs> have a chance to do, do that. Yeah, I, I think we were, when we were fortunate enough to visit it, we have twice, but most recently when we took the photos uh, and the owner uh, invited us in for a while. What is incredible about the house is it's it's very comfortable. It's not air conditioned, and it's in the flats of Kahala. Yet it's extremely cool. It was extremely well designed for. Mm -hmm. Its location. Probably living in Arizona, they really learned how to make things cooler well, down. <laughs> I, I was surprised that the, uh, you know, the residence itself, well kept up, That's really good. nice. Yeah. You know, I was. Uh, they, they must really like that house then. So the next slide I wanted to show is like one of actually uh, and a very intriguing building to me because I've I seen it every time we drive along um, Kapiolani it's a yeah. just a little walk up along Kapiolani and it's all it's always intrigued me because it has a lot of interesting details and it's only been like maybe the last five years where I even knew it was done by Oyakawa. So, you know, even more so, I find him very intriguing. I actually lived there when I was going to the University of Hawaii. Yeah. And uh, uh, it was a project he did for his family. And, okay. and uh, his, his brother lived there and managed it. And uh, anyway, yeah, it, it was a great little place. The interior all has cabinetry uh, that's uh, mahogany and uh, a very fine quality. And you can see the little lights coming down under the windows above. And those were all a different colored glass, so they allowed different patterns as the sun hit them coming into. So that those little squares that are yeah. going down the building, yeah. those were um, colored lights? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. really neat. Um, I think so. it might still be there, but I'm not sure. I never go by at yeah. night. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, and I have more slides of this um, building. 
a little further away. And then I think the next one shows, you know, like I've always thought this was like such a large cantilever as well. That's, and it's with it's withstood. So you lived there, and so when were you living there then? In the sixties? Oh uh, yeah, late sixties, early seventies. Yeah. And it was there for a while already, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember this building? Yeah. Uh, from what I understand, it was one of his earlier works. Yeah, okay, so, so yeah. early, or one no, of the because of his family. He built it for his family. And, and um, uh, well, you know, Steve, uh, he, his mentor, Mr. Wright. I think they were uh, very uh, in those early days, uh -huh. the hands-on. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Mr. Wright uh, would, would narrate and. They would all gather around him. Yeah. Yeah, from what I understand what Steve used to talk about. So was yeah. it was Wright alive? Wait, when did Wright pass away? 1959. 1959. Yeah, so okay. So he left Taliesin right when either when he just before he passed away or uh, right uh, after. Apparently he right before he did pass yeah. away, if the dates are correct there. Maybe we can lead into that with a later project we're okay. going to talk about. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure. So let's see now. What other slide? I what other slides that I could find? So I'm sorry. This is not like the best photo because I got this off of like uh, um, maps, Google Maps. But this is also another building that I've watched and have been intrigued by for many years. And then I find out it's done by Oyakawa. Again, mm -hmm. I just found that out maybe like a year ago that it's on Oyakawa. Oh. But it's a, a medical arts building, but it's kind of in, it looks like it's endangered now that. Um, it's an old building. It's, yeah, <laughs> it looks empty and there are lots of um, trucks being parked in there. Mm -hmm. So I just keep being afraid that I'm going to drive by one day and it's going to be completely empty. But do you guys know anything about this building? I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, it's on on New Wanu, I believe. Yeah, right. And, so this and, is and there was a medical ones. arts building, it had yeah. doctor's offices. Yeah. Uh, I know right. there was a physical therapy oh. group in for a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know the current status. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I it know. looks empty. Yeah. It's scary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but let's see. Now, we can go on to more buildings. So this is just a little closer up of the building. But you know how he uses kind of yeah. like the natural. Yeah, right? it, yeah. it was yeah. a concrete block. Mm -hmm. And you can see the mitered windows and the detail. Yeah, uh, the corner I, I don't think yeah, that I don't think window. the air conditioning ducting was probably probably not original. part of his design. No, <laughs> I yeah. don't think yeah, so. Yeah, but it's a nice building. It is. It's a very nice building, and everything about I like the you know the the gate entrance fence yeah, and yeah, everything. Yeah, that's nicely looks, done. Yeah, it looks well designed and integrated into part of the building, which is something that's not done too often now. But um, so let's see what other what other buildings do. So now we come into his phase of like libraries. Yeah. So does anybody know how he got all these great um, commissions to do? Uh, I'm not too familiar, but he, he, uh, he had his ways of playing politics. Did he? Was <laughs> you he know, smart about that? <laughs> not, not, you know, in those terms, but yeah. he had his contacts, you know. <laughs> and uh, I don't know who or what group, but anyway, when I uh, Touch. I mean, talk to people. Uh -huh. He did get uh, quite a few commission libraries, Kauai, yeah, uh, right. Aia, and, yeah. and several different ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, we, I know of three, so we have the pictures of the three oh, I know three. of, but there might be more. And lots of school buildings as yeah. well, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we haven't researched the school building. Do you mm. know what school buildings he's done? I think the Mauna Lua Intermediate was a pretty large project. Okay. And there are some on Windward campuses I know of. So these and are all so new buildings that he designed and yes. had built. Yeah. So he had, for the short time that he was working in Hawaii, he did quite a bit of big kept buildings. Busy. Yeah, oh, he kept yeah. pretty busy, yes. it sounds he, like. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So, I mean, and then again, this is like an octagonal building, I believe. Yeah, it and is. So it's got that kind of right in. Um, organic feel. This is the interior. Yeah, it has a central skylight, and then you can see that there are perimeter windows above all of the uh, the library stacking. So it, it had an interesting balance of natural light, you mm -hmm. know, during the daytime. Yeah, well done. Yeah. 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 So it's right now it's um, an office building. So 
I don't think it's endangered because mm -hmm. I think they're, they're actually using it, but the, it's no longer the library. The libraries yet. probably yeah. need all the space they can get right now. Right, yeah. right, right, because it is yeah. relatively small. If you yeah, think I think yeah, another one, uh, Lilia Library was another one. Yes, actually yeah. that's there. There speaking right of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is Liliha Library, and it's um, most people, you can see it off the freeway, right? That's correct. So, again, it's another one that has intrigued me for years and years and years, just like. You know, sometimes I hear all different stories as time go along, what they're going to do with this library because next to the freeway. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Where, where I guess they were, everybody was nervous when the freeway was built, huh? I think one thing interesting about this project, it's my understanding, this was the first that the architect uh, specified all the furnishings as well as oh, yeah. all the built-in you know, cabinetry, et cetera, like that. Okay. And I think it had a lot of uh, Herman Miller furnishings specified, et cetera, oh. which were probably considered more designer or higher yeah. end at the time. Oh, I'm sure. And, and that occurred is. also in, in La Liha. <laughs> I mean, I mean in, uh, on Kauai as oh, well. Oh, okay, so, okay. I think so, this was the first. Yeah, so I had quite a few pictures of um, this Liliha Library, and I just remember finding out, oh, it was done by this architect, Stephen Oyakawa, yeah. and you know, it's yeah. like he went to Taliesin, and then it was like, oh, no wonder. Yeah, but, one of the few buildings that uh, he had the parking uh, upstairs. Right. So there's a ramp on the side of it. Right, you know? right. Which is sometimes not the best, but it's <laughs> but it's really nice. I mean, even like um, this. I mean, it's it's. Sorry, it's not the best picture. They haven't mowed their lawn, but I thought it was just so nice that they even like the just the bench. You know, the details of just the bench, the way it cantilevers out. I thought. It's so nice, and then the moon gate on the um, in that side there. I just thought, and the curve instead of just coming straight down, there's this little curve in it that just adds so much texture and interest to this building. So, so I think this was, I guess, still before you guys' time, right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So wh when did you go move into? When did you work for uh, Stephen? Um, well, see, uh, I was at Taliesin maybe like uh, 61 through 67. Okay. Wow, so, uh, you were there quite a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very long time. And Mrs. Wright had, uh, oh, okay. you know, taken over. Taken over the, 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 uh, the architectural side, which Wesley Peters handled with Jack, Jack Howe. But uh, you had uh, Yovana also was there at the time doing the dance program, you know. Is that one of Wright's children? Or yes, the, oh, okay. the, the, the daughter. daughter. Okay. And she had those. So uh, when I got there, kind of a mixed feeling yeah, because of Mr. Wright's death around mm. two years hence. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't all organized, or, you know, people going here, there. So when I got there, they were moving to Wisconsin. So I really didn't meet every, you know, all the whole faculty. Oh, really? you know. So first thing I did is, okay, you went to Wisconsin, here's your <laughs> so you went to ID, Wisconsin? yeah, yeah, and the car that you're going to go with in a caravan. Oh, really? So I really didn't meet Mrs. Wright and the whole group at that time. Except that when I got there, there was a sand sandstorm coming up, and I thought I was in real desert. <laughs> <laughs> coming from Hawaii, I'm sure it was. I said, so did your driver. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ken Lockhart. Yeah. I said, hey, Ken, what's this? And he had the windshield going, you know, because of the sandstorm. Yeah, right, and I thought, right. wow, this is a desert. <laughs> oh, that's my first. Arizona experience at Taliesin. Oh my goodness. Maybe a little background is appropriate. You know, the original Taliesin is in Wisconsin, Spring Green, it's right, about 40 right, miles outside right. Madison. And so the, the fellowship is the school and the architects and the whole group were known. Uh, spent the summers uh, in Wisconsin and all that, and in the winters it just became too cold. So they decided to go starting in the mid 30s to Arizona, yeah. and so there was this migration that always occurred, and right. Roy was lucky enough to get there right before the migration. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So I guess our next slide, I think it's, we might still be on the Liha Library. This is the interior skylight. You know, again, it shows his, um, kind of his interest in this organic architecture, which, 
And so I, I think the last actual project that I have of his is this, uh, well, not actual, I have one more, that, which is yeah. the dorms, but is the Li Lihue Public Library, which is in Kauai. So this was in the later 60s, right? I think so. One of his, uh, his later yeah, projects, right? Later projects. So were you involved? Were you working for uh, him no, at this time? Uh, he I, still I hadn't come he, back yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Lahui may have been after the university. I'm thinking. I'm not. Oh, I'm not yeah. really sure. Be interesting. Yeah, we should research that. And yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> but Lihui Library. I mean, I, I've always been just in awe of its. Um, of its beauty. So did he ever talk to you guys about it? Like, some people say it's supposed to look like an open book. Some people say it's like soaring wings so you can fly when you learn. And, you know, I've just heard all kinds of stories about what, what they think it should be, what it represents. But did he ever say anything? About uh, I haven't. Uh they didn't have any controversy over the library. Yeah, I, I think it's probably just appropriate to the site, and and I, I think, think the so. way that it allows natural light to come in. Yeah, I think it's, so. it's, yeah. it's a beautiful library. It's um, if you if we can see more of the slides, maybe we can see. And actually, you know, going to it, it's a really hard building to photograph. Uh -huh. I mean, it's so much more beautiful in person than it is in photographs. And then, yeah, on this one, it kind of reminded me of the TWA. Oh, yeah. Uh, sure, yeah. yeah. Sure, no. So that's why I, th I thought, yeah. oh, maybe it's the one that it's supposed to be flying. <laughs> it soars up into, um, you know, ed for education. So tell me a little bit, though, about Stephen Oyakawa as a person. So you worked with him, and you knew him. Was he, like, quiet, or was he a gregarious kind of a guy, or what? What was he like? Yeah. I always found him uh, normal, uh, very, <laughs> very, very thoughtful, you okay. know, and uh, very into and sharing of, of his projects and what he was doing. And uh, I, I didn't come along until 1968, so Musashi was probably 10 or 11 years old then. Okay, his you son. Know? Yeah. yeah. And so he seemed to be a, a good, good attentive father. And uh, I, I remember him meditating and being, I believe, into martial arts, as, as was Musashi okay. at the time. And, but, but Roy spent more time. I mean, you actually worked with him in the office. I did work it with him yeah. in the office. And, um, well, he, he did meditate, like, like Kim says, uh, in the morning. Uh -huh. uh, we come in there in the morning, and I said, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, Be quiet. <laughs> so um, uh, Charlie and I, he's a draftsman, worked okay, with Steve for a one. number of years. And we just do a meditation for maybe 10, 15 minutes okay. to, to get our thoughts and ideas in line, you know, okay. before we start working. <laughs> That's interesting. Was he in so Manoa or was he in Kailua then? Um, I, it was in Kailua at that yeah, time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the, yeah. So we're going to go to, I guess, the, uh, one of the last few slides, if we can show um, the rest of our slides. So this was also a big project. Right, that he got. That's correct. So, and I think was this controversial? It was a little bit. You hear? You heard? Well, you know, <laughs> uh, people say, f from you know, rubbish can to yeah. whatever. You know, you hear <laughs> that all over. Still the time. organic. <laughs> uh, I thought he he did, uh, as a dormitory yeah. is concerned, uh, f for the Which, space yeah. and all that. I think he did a very good job because people don't realize. Uh, about the the, um, the difficulty, the of, difficult. Uh, let's yeah, say uh, sure. on, on the shading panels, yeah, yeah, yeah. on the exterior, yeah. uh, it, it's triple around. You're going this direction, going this direction, oh. and going this oh, direction. Oh wow, a lot of ge geometry. Well, that's why they they uh, they had okay. figured it out uh, when they first started in, in many facets, yeah. trying to figure out. So, put that together. Okay. D did you folks want to talk about the Kona Resort? Because actually, we're, we're kind of r starting oh, to run out of oh. time, but... Um, we didn't have our break. We did. We d <laughs> <laughs> but this is a beautiful rendering. Yeah. And uh, so we, c we only have like a few seconds left, but I don't... Did you want to say anything about this? I got well, this from you. It's beautiful. I, 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 
I'm just thinking that probably the time, it, it was about time of statehood, you know, in 1959. Yeah. Yeah. And this was planned for the Kona Coast of Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was by Talias and Associated yeah. Architects, which had taken over after Frank Lloyd Wright's death. And I just think that probably the timing of Steve's coming back here, oh, uh, what, probably if it, especially if it preceded the death, and I, I, I know that he had intended to become you know, uh, involved with this project. Oh, okay. So I think there's so something there, came, yeah, some history that's there. probably yeah. why he came back. Huh? Yeah, it's a beautiful night rendering. It's rendering. beautiful. Yeah. And uh, one of our former student architect was David Davison. And he does uh, night rendering. I used to watch him, and uh, he, he has this technique uh, that really make it uh, outstanding yeah. if you have a night it's, shot like yeah, that. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's quite lost art, too. But, um, <laughs> well, it's unfortunate it was never built. Yeah, but anyway, quite, a, really. quite a project. But um, so I, th I think we're running out of time. But if you, we want, Dokomomo Hawaii invites you both to come and do a talk story. And we want people out there listening to keep um, pay attention to when Dokomomo has talk stories because we'd, we're going to have, we'd love to have you guys to come back and talk even more about Stephen Oyakao because personally he is an architect of great interest to me. Um, he's, he has like some really unique buildings and I, I think we can research and find even more for the next talk story. So if maybe people can come and watch it. And, um, and I think we, we thank you very, very much for um, being with us and for sharing whatever you know about um, Stephen. One quick thing, I forgot to say, when did he pass away? When did he leave Hawaii and pass away? I think people are always kind of curious about I, I that. I think mid-70s, and I believe he passed away in 1980, he had gone to Colorado and was working with a colleague. With who? A colleague from Taliesin. A colleague yeah. from Taliesin, yeah. he went to Colorado. Kelly Oliver, actually. Yeah, Kelly Oliver. Okay, and then he passed away in 1980 in Colorado. Yes, he did. Okay. So he had. So basically, he only worked in Hawaii for like 15 years, yeah, really. Yeah, that's, so, that's my, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. my okay. understanding. So thank you, thank you again, thank you everybody for listening. Stay tuned for uh, more humane architecture next week. There'll be another really interesting um, Dokomomo Hawaii talk, and we hope you folks all come to our next uh, Dokomomo Hawaii talk story and. Uh, keep keep watching us on Facebook and Instagram, and we will post when we have these two lovely gentlemen on our talk story to talk more about Stephen Oyakawa, or at least about Taliesin. Maybe we'll find out even more about Taliesin, what it was like there. So thank you, everyone. Thank